Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you have been happy and nappy like I have been. This is part two of the He Tried to Infect Me video. Oh, I was not infected by the way, just to clear that up. So I'm infected and I have herpes. I'm STD free, have no herpes, no nothing. Okay, I'm actually quite healthy. So this is gonna be like a form of informative STD facts. Hope you guys like it. Please continue watching. You know, you might learn something, you know. Mm. Drink lots of water, you guys. So, we're going to start with herpes, okay? So, that's what he tried to infect me with. So, herpes is caused by two, two different viruses. You have herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2. Also called HSV1 and HSV2. HSV1 normally causes oral herpes and is usually contracted through non-sexual contact with saliva. But it can also cause genital herpes. So if you have oral herpes and you give someone oral sex, then they are going to have genital herpes. Okay? So so HSV1 can cause both genital and oral, oral, oral herpes, just like HSV2. It normally causes genital herpes, but of course it can cause oral herpes if you, you know, you have, you give someone oral sex and they have herpes, okay? And it can be transmitted through contact with the herpes sore, saliva, or genital secretions, ew, and <laughs> the skin area of the infection. It can also be transmitted even if the person is not showing an outbreak. So, like I said in my last video, when I saw him, like, after that whole or ordeal, I couldn't I couldn't really tell that he even had a sore, a sore there. You know, it looks clear. You know, I couldn't really tell. Maybe he had, like, a little mark, but it wasn't like, oh, yeah, like, oh, that was a herpes scar. No. So... It falls off and people don't always have like scars. So just because you don't you don't see an outbreak occurring doesn't mean that they can't give you the disease because they still actually can. And also can be passed to Ombra Child. My last video I said goes through the the placenta. I don't think that's scientifically correct, but it but herpes can infect an unborn unborn fetus, unborn in the world, unborn fetus in the womb. It's probably because of blood, you know. So now we're gonna move on to just STDs in general. There are about there are over twenty five STDs. Some STDs cause infertility and cancer. I I believe chl chlamydia and gonorrhea. If they're left untreated, they can cause in infertility. And HP, HPV, which is the human papilloma virus, can cause cancer. If it's left untreated, HPV can actually cause like genital uh, warts and then in return, I believe the warts cause cervical, cervical cancer. But it can also, sorry, it can also cause cancer in males. So just because you a dude don't mean your, um, your, what do you call it? I forgot the word. I'm sorry, I'm having a brain fart. But just because you're, you're a male doesn't mean, mean that you can't get cancer from HPV because you can't. Condoms do not provide 100% protection from herpes okay that's because herpes can be anywhere on the body where there was an open wound that herpes virus that, that came in contact with the herpes virus so you so for example condoms do not cover testicles right so you playing with some testicles and they got herpes down there you touching or whatever then you can possibly get herpes from the testicles because those aren't covered by by the condom therefore you're not protected from them so you know, you just have to be careful. Kind of one hundred percent effective. So if you, I, if you're watching this, I want you to Google, like, go to actual Google, type in condoms. What pops up, I believe, is stuff from um, WebMD. It's it's kind of like it has like blue. It has like pictures stuff like that, and it has like uh, it has the different forms of like protection. And it has their effectiveness for condoms. It has the perfect use rate, which is like 97 or 98 percent. That's if you use condoms correctly each and every time you have sex. If you if, if you use it each time you have sex and you use it correctly, which means that you put it on correctly and you're, uh, there's enough lub lubrication 
then it's like 98% effective. But there's also, there's also is the actual use rate, which accounts for people making mistakes and not using them correctly. That is 82%. So I advise you, when you, you, you want to use a condom, look at that 82% because you're not perfect, which means that you may make a mistake. You may put it on, what, backwards. You may not use enough lube. Just stuff my It might be expired. You will be putting, or you might not store it correctly. Like, if you put condoms in light heat, they will degrade faster. You're supposed to put them in, like, a cool place, like room temperature, I think. So, 82%. That means there's a 28% chance that the condom will fail. So, I will look at that stat to remind you to use it correctly in each and every time versus the 98%. That's just misleading, I believe. I feel like that really is just misleading because that's only if you use it correctly each and every time. We're not perfect, so people are not going to use it correctly each and every time. Duh. So, yeah, they're not 100% effective. Also, you can get STDs from oral, anal, and mutual masturbation. So, you don't even have to have sex to get an STD, which is crazy. You just have to have been doing something sexual, basically. So, be careful. Also, most people with herpes do not have symptoms. And that's because not every, people aren't always break are always having the outbreaks. With most STDs, they are asymptomatic for either gender gender or for both genders. So some STDs, males may be asymptomatic. Say half, let's say half males are it's asymptomatic for one disease. Then for females, it may only be thirty percent of females don't have symptoms. But that's still 30% because 50% and that's 8% of people who aren't asymptomatic for that disease. So you have to be careful. Because sometimes they're asymptomatic for both genders. Sometimes it's a percentage of one gender that is asymptomatic. But most SCDs are asymptomatic. Which means that you cannot go based off of how a person looks. You can have HIV for 10 years and not know it because you will not have symptoms. So there you go. Also, having an STD puts you at greater risk for HIV. And that's because of behaviors that put you at risk for the regular, for the other STD can put you at risk to get HIV. Also, if you have sores, those open wounds make it easier for HIV to get into your body. So, you need to be careful, you know. Maybe if you have an STD person, if it's treatable, make sure you're taking your medicine so you can be cured of it. Because if not, you're putting yourself at higher risk for HIV. And I'll have a disclaimer. I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm a biology student. I'm about to graduate. Okay, I'm no way a, a doctor or anything. All the information I got from is from either college websites, so they're .edu, or I got it from the, C the CDC, that Center for Disease Control. So these are all credible sources. You can go ahead and look up. Also, some of the things that I'm saying are things that I already know from my prior research. So, um... I will link those in the uh, description box. You can go ahead and look at it and read for yourself. Um, so common STDs are chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, chancroid. That sounds crazy. Okay, chancroid, you got the chank. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. Okay, HPV, herpes, hepatitis A, B, and C, and, H and HIV. So remember that STDs can be transmitted through like blood, it can be transmitted through bodily fluids, some through breast through breast milk like HIV, you know you can pass it on to your uh, child by breast milk. So, but if you're pregnant, you're gonna get an STD screening anyway. So they'll give you medicine to, to prevent that from happening. But I'm just saying. Um, also, I know say with herpes that herpes outbreaks can be triggered by stress and by sunlight. So if you know that you have herpes, find ways to manage your stress. Use like shea butter. That's natural. Um, skin protected from sun so just be careful out here hope y'all enjoyed this video look i don't care who y'all messing with okay but just be safe because don't nobody want no scd okay scd is on the rise okay and some like what's it gonna real it's one of these stds that is now a super bug okay it is antibiotic resistant and that and y'all look if y'all get infected with a curable std take your antibiotic for the whole week or for whatever the doctor said. The doctor said take that antibiotic twice a day for a month. You take it twice a day every day of that month. You don't want to skip no day. You don't want to stop taking it because you're feeling better. Because then that that virus or not virus, that bacteria can become resistant because not all of it is going to be killed if you stop taking your dosage early. So, 
we got antibody resistant STDs out here, and that, that means it's not curable. Okay, so what was curable is now incurable, and that's not good. So please protect yourself, know your status, okay? Do whatever who you want to do it with. Just just be safe, okay? Because you don't want to get herpes and then kiss your child. No, they have herpes. That's messed up. Granted, they have medicine to stop, uh, to prevent you from transmitting, transmitting it to someone, but nothing is ever 100%. So, this is the end of my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please stay happy and happy, and please, please, please stay safe. Have fun, but stay safe, okay? And please, if you haven't watched my previous video, he tried to infect me. Go watch it. It's funny. You can get a little giggle out of it. But remember the seriousness up in this video. Okay? You don't want no STDs. Have a good day. Bye-bye.